Today on Barn Finds, we're going to go through a Yamaha, a 1983 Yamaha XS650 Heritage Special. And really what I'm going to do today is go outline why you don't want to leave these guys outside. This is another barn find that I dragged in a couple days ago and it's so sad to see what happens to a motorcycle that is just basically abandoned out in a guy's backyard because that's where most of my barn finds come from people that leave them outside to rot so today on this episode we're going to go over what to look for when you walk into a backyard and you see a motorcycle sitting there is it worth restoring today on fix and ride barn finds Now usually I just start at the beginning of the motorcycle. So first thing you want to do is see what kind of condition the tires are in. Obviously if they've been outside for any length of time you're going to have to replace the tire. Another thing that I look for is the condition of the disc. You notice this one's pretty rusty. Yamahas in my opinion are the worst for rusting and pitting and I don't know what it is about Yamaha metal You may disagree with me. You can post that in the comment section Obviously, there's no brakes and I don't know if it needs fluid or whatever, but The disc is rusted. So that's gonna have to all be re this whole brake system is gonna have to be gone through I don't see any leaks from the from the fork seals. That's working in this bikes favor the fender, the chrome is actually in pretty good shape. It's got some dents up here, but other than that, the chrome on this motorcycle is not too bad. Arizona is actually pretty good for not rusting metal. It's hot out here, but it's not necessarily wet. Now I do notice some rust that has occurred on this bottom edge of this rim. This is where the rim actually was touching the ground. The water pooled up. These are all things that you want to be looking for. We'll just work our way back. You'll notice the discoloration on the cases. Now originally I believe these uh, these Heritage Specials had black cases. At least I know the center section was black. But you'll notice all of the discoloration and some of the pitting on the side covers. The pipes are actually in very good condition on this motorcycle. Some of this chrome is pretty good. You'll notice rust here, rust here. These are all minor cosmetic things that you're going to eventually have to address. The cable, the tack cable, that's more than likely going to be crispy as all get out. This thing has been outside for a long time. The reflectors are in decent shape. So tank, no dents. Badges look good. This is all going in this bike's favor. The motor rotates. That's a biggie right there. If you've got a locked up engine, plan on $500 to $1,000 and that's if you do the work yourself. It's got to rotate. If it doesn't rotate, I'd probably walk away unless you're just looking for a parts bike. Side covers. They're here on both sides. Lower side covers. They're here. The plastic probably is brittle, but the emblems are still here. Emblems are still here. All the emblems are there. The rear brakes, it's moving. Normally these are locked right here, so it's got rear brakes. Examine the overall condition of seat, tank. This motorcycle is very restorable, but it's going to take some work. The main thing going for this bike is it's got a rotating engine. Okay, here I am in the back section of the bike. Notice the turn indicators are here. Now the front indicators are there too. It's never been down that I can see. The motorcycle was purchased from an older guy. Older guys are usually pretty slow on bikes. Take it from one. I'm an old guy. I don't go as fast as I used to. But the blinkers, to find these in very good condition is hard. That's another thing going for this bike. The shocks, they've got rust. The springs look okay. There's rust on the chain adjusters. Here's a biggie. Look at the pipes. 
Look how nice that pipe is. It's never seen the pavement. Look at that pipe. It's beautiful. Those pipes are probably worth what I paid for the whole motorcycle. I mean, these pipes are just in very, very good condition. See, it's going to need a cover. Foam, more than likely, that's going to be a pain in the butt. Okay, here we are on the left side of the bike. The other thing we're looking for is chain guard. This one's in pretty decent shape. Like I mentioned earlier, Arizona is actually pretty decent to chrome. Shocks, they're uh, some discoloration. We don't know anything about the condition of the seals of the shock. They could be leaking oil. They're not leaking right now, but once you ride it, it could start leaking. Here again, the blinkers. This thing's never been down. This is a big issue for barn finds. These chains. This thing is crispy. And I mean crispy. It's hard to push. It's so rusty. It's been left outside. The chain was dry when it was left outside. This thing is a very restorable motorcycle, but just getting them out of the backyard, sometimes I've had to get bolt cutters and cut the chains off of them because you can't roll them. Here again, look at the exhaust system. Beautiful, pristine. Nothing wrong with the exhaust system. Like I mentioned earlier, that exhaust system is probably worth what I paid for the whole motorcycle. Side covers are here. They're not in the best of condition, but it's always nice to have some side covers. Like I mentioned earlier, the seat's toast. The foam, you could probably get away with just a seat cover, but the foam is worth saving. The seat cover, it's gone. All right, I'm gonna spend a little time talking about engines now. Obviously, anything that's been left outside, you're gonna to have to rep go through these carburetors. And this one will be no exception whatsoever. Here's a key point. This carburetor insulator is now 40 years old. All of these rubber parts on this motorcycle are 40 years old. These cables, these rubber insulators, anything rubber, the foot pegs, everything is 40 years old. Plan on going through the carburetors at a minimum. The other thing that's nice about this particular motorcycle is the motor rotates and doesn't make any noise. And always run the gears. Always go through all five gears, six gears, whatever the tranny's got. Usually one down, four up, but you can figure out what the shift pattern is. There's usually a guide right here on the case somewhere where it'll tell you what the shift pattern is. Always go through the gears, go through all gears and make sure that you rock the bike back and forth when you go into these gears. Sometimes they just get sticky. So the motorcycle's actually got good compression. I don't see any reason why this would not be a runner. It would probably cost you about $500 to $1,000 to put it back in pretty decent running condition. Uh, the bike, in my opinion, is well worth doing that too. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the bike down and we're going to talk a little bit about gauges, fuel tanks, and seats. Okay, we're on the top side of the bike. Here's a big issue. It's nice to have a set of keys. So if you can't find a set of keys, you're probably going to be looking at an ignition switch. Obviously, if you can get into the tank with the set of keys, and this one will open, Bad thing about leaving them outside, these gauges, this used to be red, these were all red, the red line was, there's a needle missing off the tack. This guy left it outside and it just baked these gauges. So the center cluster's here, speedos here, tacks here, heritage special, little insignia, that's kind of nice to have. The switch is here, this one's going to need some work. This one here, I don't know anything about it. Both the levers are here. The original mirrors are still here, but let's take a peek inside the tank, see if I can get in here. And this is pretty big, because if you've got to solve rust issues, boy, it gets complicated real quick. Well, that key don't want to work. And that key don't want to work. Here again, you leave them outside, all of that stuff just gets rusty in these mechanisms. 
I've actually taken the time earlier to look inside the tank and uh, it's got a little bit of rust in it. Of course the gas that's in there is kind of nasty but it's definitely savable. There's no major dents on this tank. I don't really like the artwork because you know that somebody made it their own bike but if you're looking to sell the bike or flip the bike somebody may come along and not like that artwork so motorcycles very restorable I don't see any reason why the new buyer whoever that turns out to be won't be able to make this thing run drive stop just be a nice bike it's slim it's relatively light gobs of torque these 650s have just all kinds of low end so coming out of corners is going to be a lot of fun with something like this so anyway this is mark you i would recommend that you like and subscribe these videos and you're welcome to post some comments in the comment section and i hope you learned something today and uh, thank you once again and have a great afternoon Last but not least, I, I, I would be remiss if I did not include the paperwork. And so this is a Arizona title. And in Arizona, the title has to be signed off in front of a notary by the owner or the person whose name is on this title. So this owner is releasing ownership by signing the title. Very important to make sure that you match the VIN. I can't emphasize that enough. Don't just take a piece of paper from these people. Go to the steering neck, find the vehicle ID, and make sure that it lines up with the numbers on this title. You don't want to get a title that doesn't belong to a vehicle. And every state's a little bit different. In the state of Arizona, they require that it be signed by the legal owner or the person on this title in front of a notary. Check your state's regulations. Very important. If you plan on riding this motorcycle, you don't want to have to get fancy with paperwork, bonded titles, salvage titles, a, you know, a band, whatever. You don't want to mess with that. If you can get a piece of paper, an ownership document, this is huge. It's worth hundreds because that's what it's going to cost you to actually go get a legal title.